Good morning, everyone. I am glad to welcome you today to this webinar organized by EuroACE, the European Alliance of Companies for Energy Efficiency in Buildings. I am Hélène Sibilo and I work at EuroACE as a senior EUFS manager. Today, I will guide you through this webinar as a moderator. Before we start, just a short announcement on how we will operate. As a participant, you are kindly asked to remain muted for the whole duration of the webinar. We also ask you to not turn on your camera. Only the speakers and myself will stay unmuted. After the speaker's presentation, a Q&A session of around 20 minutes will take place. During this session, but also already during the speaker's presentations, you can type in your questions in the GoToMeeting chat box. Please address your question to everyone. I will pick up the questions in the Q&A session and read them out loud to the speakers. If time does not allow to cover all the questions, they will be forwarded to the speakers for a later response in writing. The PowerPoint presentations, the recording and the questions will be shared with you in due course and they will also be posted on our website. Now I pass the floor to Julie Krestrup, our president, for the formal introduction to this webinar. Good morning and welcome to the first webinar in the second series on the renovation wave. Um, and you just presented me, my name is Judy Kestrup, I'm head of PA at Danfoss, but also the president of Eurace. Uh, and we're delighted to have so many of you with us um, again today. Um, and as with the other uh, webinars, to see the spread in terms of member states and backgrounds, and that really is the advantage of doing these things online. Now, we had a first series of webinars on the renovation wave, um, and I hope some of you join us for those as well. Um, and in those, we kept things quite high level. We were looking at the segment versus the area-based approach. We were looking at how to finance energy efficient renovations and finally the ecosystem of the renovation wave. So what other EU initiatives should be aligned with and linked to the renovation wave? And so on the back of that, we decided to do the second wave and second series. And here we want to be uh, dig a bit, bit deeper and become more concrete by focusing on sharing good experiences at regional and at local level that can inspire others. Um, and that's really essential because what will make or break this renovation wave initiative will be the ability to scale up. Um, because what we've had so far is um, a lot of really promising projects here and there, um, but what we want is these projects everywhere. I, what can we do to achieve a critical mass in terms of renovation uptake? And uh, we're doing this in the frame of Corona. Uh, we're still very much in the midst of a medical crisis. Uh, but we are also starting to look ahead and to look at how to reboot Europe's economies and doing so in a way that's green. Um, and what we do see is growing support for making sure that is the case uh, from the Commission and the Parliament and from a growing number of member states. Uh, Timmermans confirmed again yesterday in his intervention at the Petersburg Dialogue that the recovery must be green and that the Green Deal is a winning growth strategy for the EU. And just this morning was a love and alliance set in a video statement that we can bounce back better. Uh, and then she specifically mentioned renovating our homes and making them energy efficient. Uh, we also know from a member state level, 10 countries came together on the 9th of April to vote an op-ed calling for the Green Deal to be central to resilient recovery uh, and saying that the Green Deal provides us with a roadmap to make the right choices in responding to the economic crisis. Uh, more countries have since joined that movement, including France. They also said that we should withstand the temptation of short-term solutions in response to the present crisis and we don't want to lock Europe in into a fossil fuel economy for the days to come. Um, and they're very right about that. Uh, um, on the other hand, we also do need to do something now relatively short term to get moving. Um, and one of those areas where we need to see significant change is this renovation wave um, initiative. And from my personal perspective, I do think that the corona uh, crisis um, is an opportunity for us to take an initiative um, and make sure it becomes much more than that. It becomes something really tangible that can create um, the jobs and the growth for Europe that we need also in a short-term future. Um, and that's also why I'd be delighted today to have uh, um, uh, Eau de France represented on the line um, to tell us very tangibly how they have used this area-based approach to link to technical assistance to ensure a big uptake in their area. Um, this is the first of three uh, webinars in this series. We'll have a, a second one on the 11th of May, working with energy cities. But for now, I'd like to hand back with, uh, back to Adrian, who will then take us through the opening remarks of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. And uh, good morning, everybody. I would also like to add my thanks to you for choosing uh, Eurowaces webinar uh, this morning. 
and I hope that you will learn uh, in detail about some of the more important aspects of what can make uh, a renovation wave a success. Uh, my presentation will be very short. I just wanted to uh, let you know a little about ourselves and um, what we stand for, and then a few words on our ideas around area-based uh, renovation waves. <clears throat> so we are a European association representing uh, 12 companies, and these companies together produce a great deal of the materials, equipment, services, and controls that go together to make highly energy efficient and highly energy performing buildings. Together across Europe, they employ more than 200,000 uh, people at more than 900 production and office locations. Um, we in Euroways work on high level EU policy. Uh, we do that because we firmly believe that improving the energy efficiency of buildings and reducing their energy demand is the most cost-effective way of creating employment and securing economic growth and recovery. Uh, it's the best way to provide Europeans with comfortable and healthy homes, something we think people are more aware of now than ever. And of course, because we're such high energy users in the building sector, we can, uh, by reducing our demand, meet carbon reduction targets and achieve greater energy security. One of our key actions at, at Euroace is the Renovate Europe campaign, which many of you will know about. It's an EU-wide political communications campaign that ex focuses exclusively on ambitious energy renovation of the building stock. We have 38 partners supporting that campaign, including 14 uh, national level partners. And we have a high level of political support uh, uh, as witnessed by the 41 champions together for renovation that we uh, have. In the Renovate Europe campaign, we have showcased best practices, and I would invite you to look at the online version of our exhibition that took place inside the European Parliament last year, showcasing 23 best case projects and six uh, financing uh, programs. But turning more to today's discussion, <clears throat> uh, we have in a previous webinar spoken about the idea of an area-based approach and how that can be a very successful way of uh, upscaling the renovation needed of our existing building stock. And area-based approaches have been successful in countries like France and Scotland. And today I will give you a short reminder of our own review, and then I will um, pass back to Helen, who will introduce our keynote speaker for this uh, webinar. So from our point of view, what is an area-based approach? Well, in taking an area-based approach, we suggest that you need to define a group of buildings that are closely located to each other, based, we would suggest, on a ratio of worst performing buildings. You could choose some other criteria uh, on a typology or on the age block, but we would like to see the worst performing buildings treated first. Then you roll out a plan to renovate all the buildings in the defined area at the same time under the same program. And this uh, can only really happen effectively when the right sets of enabling measures are available to the owners of the buildings and the occupiers of the buildings. And we will come in a moment to what I see as some of the key enabling measures. What are the advantages of an area-based approach? Well, you can quickly achieve economies of scale. We see that you can improve all parts of an area, giving a boost to the community and the social well-being within the area as well, therefore avoiding feelings of discrimination. You can consolidate the community spirit and you manifest urban regeneration and just transition uh, in one single action or program. Now, we don't pretend that such a program uh, or an area-based approach can be put in overnight. And indeed, uh, such programs probably have to be multi-annual programs. But we have seen whole areas being uh, fully renovated across a space of two to five years. And that's not 
such a long time frame uh, when we're planning for 2050. So what enabling measures am I referring to? Uh, the existence of coherent long-term innovation strategies that are coordinated from uh, national through uh, regional to local level is one enabling measure that's important. So you have a target to which you can uh, direct your efforts. There should be, we believe, targets for the energy demand reduction for each uh, area or building typology. So a target for the group of buildings you've identified. But that shouldn't take away from the need for each and every building to achieve its uh, potential. And for that, we believe having some binding minim minimum energy performance standards to be achieved uh, in the area-based program is crucially important. Having independent technical assistance at all stages to help guide building owners and occupiers through the process and to uh, be with them through the changes that will occur in their neighborhood or their area is important. And finally, a key element is financial instruments that are tailored to each consumer segment. So we have noted that area-based approaches shows, uh, shows that success is just around the corner and that trust is built close to home. Uh, so in Europe, as many cities and regions have regulatory powers, this is a promising area to explore more fully. And now we're going to hear from the experience of area-based uh, approaches from France. And to introduce our keynote speaker, I pass back to Helen Sibilo uh, for that introduction. Helen. Thank you, Adrian, for the overarching presentation. Now we're moving on to the main presentation of today's webinar, and our speaker is Elodie Denisard from the French region Hauts-de-France. Elodie will guide us through their experience in Hauts-de-France with renovation over the last few years, um, talking about aggregation of projects, financing, and rollout of advisory services. Elodie, the floor is yours, and you have about 20 minutes. Um, thank you. Thanks to to all the team of uh, of for the for the webinar. So um, yes, we are going to present uh, our regional strategy for private home renovation. So uh, we can start. Uh, we can go on with the slides. So uh, we um, we are going to present uh, a bit the regional context so that you know where is all the France and uh, what uh, what we have done the last uh, the last year. So next slide, please. So where are we based? We are a region of 6 million inhabitants based is, uh, in the north of France. Uh, we, uh, have, um, we have merged between the Picardy region, we which was most a rural region, uh, and the North Pacale region in 2016. Um, and uh, we, you will see that we have basically uh, small and medium sized uh, cities and the capital cities are Amiens and Lille, which is uh, the metropolitan uh, area. Next slide, please. So um, our regional um, structure of uh, private homes, uh, to show you that uh, we have uh, different um, targets in terms of uh, uh, private home uh, renovation. Uh, we have uh, two, two and a half million of primary residences, uh, which were, um, uh, uh, for 60% of them, built before the thermal reg regulation of 1975. And uh, we have a regional specificity, which means that uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, detached houses, mo much more than the national average. And we have a structure of our housing stock, which depends a lot on the uh, types of territories. Uh, we have some territories, uh, obviously, with big volumes uh, in the metropolitan areas, for example, and also in the uh, ex-mining area. And we have also a lot of territories with most uh, energy sieves uh, in uh, rural areas and uh, in some uh, sectors of the Lille metropole. Uh, next slide, please. 
So just to show you the, the history of uh, different schedules for private home renovation in our region, um, and the particular uh, case study we have uh, with uh, the Elena facility uh, and the, the setting up of uh, the public service for energy efficiency, which was created by the Picardy region in 2013, uh, to uh, experiment uh, the renovation of two thousand units uh, of home, private home, um, individual and collective between 2014 and 2017. Uh, and for the reason I was explaining, we had an administrative reform in 2016. And so for these reasons, some administrative complications. And then we had an, an extension of the Elena facility for two, two more years. And we just finished the, the project end of 2019. As I was going, I will go into details uh, for that. Just for your information, there, uh, there has been also uh, an interreg project developed in this uh, topic of uh, private home renovation. And um, we, you will see that uh, from this experimentation uh, of the Elena facility, we build up a new regional strategy on private home renovation for the next uh, five years including the deployment of the tool that has been set up by the Public Service of Energy Efficiency, so the past renovation, and also the deployment of housings, one-stop shops at local level, so implemented by cities and municipalities uh, in the different territories. Next slide, please. Yeah, you can go on. So uh, just to remind you at the time of the Picardy, so um, mostly uh, rural area uh, with small and medium uh, cities, the objective uh, was uh, to, to focus on the energy sieves uh, the, the, uh, and also to, to tackle uh, energy uh, poverty uh, with, uh, in, in, this, uh, in this territory. So the political impulse uh, was in 2012, 13. Um, there was a clear need to aggregate individual projects uh, in order to create a virtual circle for local economy. Uh, so the idea was that the funding of the renovation works uh, was uh, used to, to save uh, energy consumption on energy bills and to be able to impact both the supply and the demand through a new market. The next slide, please. So you will see that, uh, and like Adrian said, the trust, the question of trust is very important to, to get uh, in touch with the uh, households. Uh, so the idea is to, to have a, a tiers de confiance, so a, a, a partner uh, who is uh, available for private households all along. So uh, to be able to define together a good works uh, program, to be ambitious, also to offer them financial uh, solutions, uh, to select the enterprises and to, to, to be sure to have a good quality of the works, and also to monitor the works after they have done, they have been done. Um, and the idea from the, the, the side of the craftsmen and the enterprises, it's to upskill uh, their technical and uh, administrative capacities. For example, they are uh, more um, able to group together. So, uh, and uh, it's uh, also important to, to be able to ensure the security of payments. Next slide, please. So the, the scheme you have on the left is the ideal scheme, the, the, the original idea of the beginning. Uh, so you have a, an energy bill uh, of two, 240 euros. And thanks to the deep renovation works, uh, you are able to save 50% of this bill. And then uh, with a neutral budget, you are able to repay the loan uh, on a long duration loan, and then uh, not to have uh, a big impact on your, uh, on your budget. This is the ideal scheme. Obviously, in the reality, it's a bit different. In terms of energy efficiency, uh, you will see uh, on, the, on the slide after, but uh, you, you will see that uh, on the energy savings, uh, it's, uh, it's more or less the case. It's about uh, 
45, 60, uh, 50 of energy savings, but the monthly payments, 100% uh, of the monthly payment is, is not uh, covered by the energy savings. So uh, the, the model has to be adapted uh, for uh, each uh, household and uh, the financial model is still evolving. Um, next slide, please. So the idea of the, the service which is uh, provided by the past renovation, the public service for energy efficiency, is to have an accompaniment all along the process of renovation. So with the definition of a working program, so for energy saving at least of 35%, then uh, the works uh, people uh, working in the public service are dealing with the consultation, the selection of the enterprises and craftsmen, uh, and uh, deal with the works supervision. And after the works, there is a follow up. So uh, during three years, an eco coaching uh, to to ensure that uh, people um, behavior uh, are corresponding to the to the, to this new uh, uh, energy efficiency of their own. Next slide, please. So we have do two different settings for two different targets. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, past renovation for the detached houses and past copropriété for the condominiums. Uh, obviously, the two targets and the two way uh, of doing the things are, are a bit different uh, depending on those targets. For detached houses, um, the, the main objectives are to accompany the owners for an ambitious job, uh, to secure the energy savings, and uh, to accompany them with an adapted financing. For condominiums, uh, the, the, the time is a bit longer because uh, there, there is a management of uh, uh, multi-stakeholder projects. Um, there are also uh, more regulatory obligations and there is uh, also a challenge on the cost control. Next slide, please. So it's another way to, to show that. Um, sorry, the, the text is in French, but uh, um, the, um, the idea is to, to, to propose for the detached housings two different options. People can be accompanied only technically for the, for the works program, for the craftsmen and so on, but without a financial solution because they are able to, uh, to, to cover the, the cost. So the accompaniment is uh, the cost of the subscription to the service uh, is of uh, 1,200 euros, or they, they can choose also to, to, to have the, the whole package uh, and then to, to have also a financial solution. So uh, a loan or a combination of loans or combination of financial tools uh, that allow them to, uh, to cover the, the cost of the renovation. And then the subscription cost is a little higher. So that's for the detached housings and for the condominiums, uh, there is a um, a fee of uh, um, 300 uh, euros per housing, uh, and if the if the, the whole pro program of works is uh, accepted and done, uh, the cost is about uh, nine uh, 900 uh, euros. Um, next slide, please. So this is um, the detail of the financial framework. Uh, all the, the charges of the, uh, the public service for energy efficiency uh, experimentation uh, between uh, 2014 and 2019. So um, you have the charges and the resources. So you will see um, that there, is, there have been a, a combination of different uh, uh, resources, subsidies, um, uh, loans, uh, energy uh, saving certificates. Um, and, and that um, the original objective was to have 2,000 uh, units uh, renovated. And uh, we will see more in detail the figures, but we have more or less 1,700 projects uh, renovated uh, end of uh, last year uh, for um, family, uh, family home, uh, single family home and multi-family home. Um, Next slide, please. 
so this is the detail of the, the cost of the accompaniment. Um, so it's uh, it's without taxes. The, the figures I showed you earlier, it was uh, with taxes. So it's uh, just to, to explain the difference. Uh, but uh, you will see that the real cost uh, is still higher than the, what we make people pay uh, because um, uh, and and yes, it's a detail that uh, energy saving certificates, for example, uh, are used to balance the cost, but the volumes are difficult to evaluate. Um, and the valuation uh, depends uh, on the market. And so we still need some subsidies to, to cover part of the, of the regie, the public service uh, internal costs. Um, yes, uh, we'll see that for, for the objective of the next years, we will try to have a financial balance for this cost, but today we still need uh, some uh, subsidies uh, to, to cover this, uh, this assistance. Next slide, please. So the main figures of our results uh, as end of uh, last year, we have renovated uh, more than uh, 600 uh, houses. Uh, for an average of uh, for, um, 43,000 uh, uh, euros uh, per renovation. Um, and you will see the figures also on the condominiums uh, with an average of um, 16,000 uh, euros per flat. Um, so we, we work with um, a database of uh, more than 800 uh, companies which are registered in a database and uh, which are uh, labeled um, with a French label called Reconnu Garant de l'Environnement, which is uh, French labeling for um, uh, environmental uh, capacities of uh, works for uh, for craftsmen and uh, and uh, SMEs, and we have um, uh, 645 loans uh, in in uh, in progress, uh, covering uh, up to 80 percent of the global cost of the works. Next slide, please. So it was just to show you the, um, the typology of the, the, the construction sector, uh, SMEs and craftsmen. Uh, obviously, uh, it's uh, mainly uh, local uh, and regional uh, SMEs and very small enterprises. Uh, and uh, they, they, um, they manage to group together in order to be able to answer to the, the call for tenders for uh, these uh, deep renovation works. Next slide, please. Just to focus on the financial support, which is uh, vital for this uh, uh, accompaniment. So the, the public service uh, is taking charge of the full amount of the works. So it's a direct payment to the construction companies, which ensure uh, a quality management. Uh, the public service collects the subsidies for the homeowners and the condominiums. So it's not necessary to wait for the subsidies to start the work. So it's interesting also in terms of uh, calendar. Um, and the homeowners start to repay at the end of the works. And um, the loan can be um, over uh, 15 to 25 years at a reasonable interest rate. And there are no penalty in case of early repayment, and the loan duration is up to 25 years. So it's this, these conditions are um, permitted thanks to the European Investment Bank uh, loan. Uh, and um, the service is also accessible to owners of apartments in condominiums, uh, in, in addition to existing uh, group loans. So the public service is really doing a, a, a job to to uh, to, um, to deal with different uh, financial solutions for uh, homeowners. Next slide, please. So just a, a slide to show you uh, what uh, type of work uh, people in the public service are doing. Uh, 
uh, in addition to the technical work of uh, energy audit and so on, uh, they are doing a, a risk assessment uh, like a bank, and so they are uh, screening uh, uh, people, uh, revenues, and so on, to, to be able to, to group them in different types of uh, risk, and also to be able to uh, establish the best uh, possible um, schedule in terms of repayment, uh, depending on the, on the works they have chosen and, uh, and, um, and their financial capacities. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, it's a figure of the average uh, measured energy savings before the works and after the works in total uh, uh, with the different um, uh, projects. Uh, so we, we have um, an average of energy saving of 45% and uh, so 62% of the monthly payments are covered by the energy savings uh, up to now. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, just to, to show you the, um, the financial package uh, of, the, of the, um, the mechanism of uh, this uh, public service, we have 13% of subsidies, 17% uh, of self-financing, and the third party direct financing, uh, meaning 70% uh, of the total of the, um, of the budget. Uh, uh, repartition. So the loans, I already mentioned them, uh, and just to show you the 1.7% of those for loans, so, uh, which is a normal uh, rate. Next slide, please. Yeah, so you, you can go through this slide maybe uh, a bit later if you want, just some, uh, some uh, guide uh, guidebooks and uh, uh, videos, uh, references to show you the, the, that um, this case study is not alone in, uh, in Europe. Uh, it's, it's one of the best, uh, uh, the most advanced, but uh, uh, there are several other uh, uh, experimentations and mechanisms existing in this framework, and you can find uh, them in, in, this, uh, in this publication. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, you can go on. Uh, so as I was mentioning at the beginning, uh, we had this experimentation uh, during uh, more than five years. And uh, the, the new region uh, uh, policymakers uh, have decided to, to build a real program for energy efficiency based on this experimentation and to develop uh, housing one-stop shops for all local territories in Ile de France uh, in order to have uh, really a simplified access for all uh, households, a unique uh, entry point uh, dealing with housing and renovation. And uh, so this um, guichet unique uh, de l'habitat, housing one-stop shops, will be developed uh, through uh, waves of call for tenders. Municipalities are uh, answering to call for tenders. And obviously, they are also supported by the region uh, and also some national and uh, hopefully some European funding also uh, to deploy uh, this first advice uh, uh, one-stop shop. So we are working also on different uh, tools, but I will not uh, detail uh, today, but uh, uh, as uh, Adrian was uh, mentioning, some um, area-based approach, uh, it's a bit the idea of our massification tools in terms of uh, to, to focus on, um, or to target uh, some uh, specific uh, homes uh, typologies. Uh, either through, through digital or software tools uh, and so on. Um, so, yeah, I'm just here yeah, to, to mention that we obviously we build uh, partnerships with uh, public and private actors of uh, renovation and uh, especially uh, the building sector and the Craftsman Federation is uh, very uh, important. Next slide, please. It's just I, I think it's it's the last one after it's just example of pictures. Um, the idea is now that we have uh, uh, really um, uh, a detailed uh, and simple uh, household pathway for renovation in Eau de France with this idea of local one-stop shops for every territory. 
uh, which give a, a first uh, advice general uh, information on, on the disposals. Then to qualify the demand, we develop these tools, uh, energy passport, energy diagnosis, uh, audits, and so on, which are taken charge of by the region. And then if the private owners wish an accompaniment, uh, we have the public service for energy efficiency, like I was presenting to, to you today, uh, which uh, accompany them uh, financially if they want and technically, and uh, also ensure a post works monitoring during uh, three years. So this is what we try to do in Eau de France, really to, to simplify uh, the, 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 the pathway for renovation to be able that everybody has the same entry points, the same messages, and that uh, we have a, a competent uh, technical and financial assistance to be able to, to, to take uh, households uh, in the end and to ensure uh, the, the deep renovation is accessible to, uh, to everybody. And just to finish, uh, I didn't put that on the slides. So you, you have some pictures after, but it's not uh, necessary uh, um, to, to, to show them now. But just to, to give you some, um, some figures, uh, we have an objective uh, in Eau de France to renovate uh, 63,000 housing per year with the label uh, BBC, so the, the Tamil regulation uh, of uh, 2012. Uh, and uh, obviously, these 63,000 housing units will not be uh, accompanied, all of them, by the Public Service for Energy Efficiency, but it's part of the tools that uh, people have uh, uh, to, to be able to, uh, to, to renovate uh, uh, their homes. And um, yeah, I'm uh, finished. So um, I thank you for your attention and I hope to be able to to your questions uh, and if not, uh, to not them and to come back to my, uh, to my Thank you very much, Elodie, for this deep dive and this presentation of what you've been doing. Um, now we are turning towards the Q&A session um, and we have a bit the minutes. Um, there are already a lot of questions in the chat box, but don't hesitate to type in your questions. Um, they will be answered any, any way, um, even written form after the webinar. Um, maybe I will start with questions. Um, so Elodie, the first questions uh, were actually on how you were engaging um, with the homeowners. Um, what messages did you use to, um, to bring them to the renovation? Um, and also a question on, do you have an idea of the conversion rate, meaning um, from the first contact to actual renovation works, how many people uh, did you get? Uh, yes, I have the um, I have the figure, but I I don't uh, I I, have, I will be able to find it, but um, uh, I don't have it uh, now. Uh, yes, it's true. Really, it's a figure we we showed at uh, at the beginning, but uh, I I had to cut some slides, so uh, I'm sorry. I will uh, I will find it back. And uh, in terms of uh, engagement. Um, the idea is really to to um, to have the, the most uh, communication uh, we can and uh, uh, the most partnership with the local authorities and also with intermediate uh, partners uh, who are doing a, a communication uh, a campaign in the territories um, and also towards craftsmen uh, and um, the to 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 try to 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 get uh, people to understand the deep renovation uh, because uh, there are lots of uh, offers on renovation it's really a, a jungle of uh, to to with uh, different uh, offers uh, uh, on some uh, specific products uh, and so uh, the 
us, the, the objective is to have at least uh, 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 35% of energy savings. Um, the idea was to have uh, uh, at least three types of uh, works done, uh, either uh, on, the, on the isolation, on the, on the windows, on the, uh, the roof, and so on. Um, and then uh, to explain uh, to, to people, uh, uh, it's it's for the best to do all the works now uh, and not to to wait uh, and to do a bit uh, uh, in, uh, in 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 several years because it's each time it's uh, another uh, another story that uh, that begin and it's also a risk uh, uh, to to for the quality of the works so it's really uh, the the idea to 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 get them involved in a deep renovation from the beginning Thank you, Elodie. Continuing on this idea of the energy performance and the ambition, um, we have a question from Céline Carré, and she says, you mentioned an average savings rate of 45% with most buildings brought to the class C of the EPC. Why didn't the project target higher savings to bring the renovated buildings in line with long-term goals? And she mentions the French equivalent BBC, so Bâtiment Basse Consommation or NZEB. Yes, it's uh, it's it's a new the new target now, uh, uh, and I mean it's it's it will be it's a national obligation also. So uh, at the time uh, in 2013, 14, uh, it was. Uh, uh, it was not uh, so uh, ambitious uh, as that, but uh, the, um, the new program for 2020-2024 we, we have on the renovation in the region is, uh, is now to, to renovate at uh, the BBC uh, equivalent uh, uh, regulation um, for our renovation. Uh, it's uh, yeah. It's uh, we we need to 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 target this uh, this level now. It's uh, it will be obligatory. So, uh, but f some years ago it was it was not uh, uh, it was not the case. We we just uh, and even uh, with this uh, ambition this level of ambition um, you you have seen that the, the costs of the works are uh, really high so <laughs> it's a bit um, the, the the difference the gap between uh, the objectives of the law and the reality of the ground and the financial capacities of uh, people Thank you, Elodie. Um, jumping on the financial uh, aspect, there are several questions on financing. Uh, first question coming from Xavier Dubuisson, and he asks, can you please explain what costs were covered with the ELENA funding? And also, based on your experience with the ELENA support, would you do it again? Yes, the, um, the Elena support was, uh, we had a support of uh, 1.8 million euros, uh, so uh, which was um, normally uh, uh, engaging a leverage effect of 20, so for one euro uh, of subsidy, you must uh, ensure that 20 euros of uh, uh, investment are uh, uh, are done after, um, and so we had a, a loan from the EIB of uh, about 30, in total 35, I think, uh, million euros, uh, and so the costs uh, for the 90% of co-funding, uh, which is uh, permitted by uh, Elena, uh, subsidy, uh, of course, went to the staff working um, for the public service, so in Amiens, uh to to uh, to be able to to develop this uh, these jobs uh, on third party funding uh, operators so people working uh, uh at the same time on technical and uh financial uh solutions for uh energy renovation uh and um yeah it's a, it's a, it's a very challenging tool 
Um, but uh, it's it's also uh, what is interesting in the in the mechanism. It's that uh, you have a, a a subsidy of almost 100% uh, uh, dedicated to to, to technical uh, staff, to technical assistance accompaniment, and uh, and and uh, there is a big uh, big challenge to 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 get uh, the investment. But it's uh, for the, the team was really. Uh, I mean, um, active and uh, and if, yes, if they could have another uh, <laughs> Elena, I think they they will uh, they will be uh, they will be happy to uh, to deploy the same <coughs> ambition. Uh, yes, uh, it's it's. I mean, from their point of view, it's it has been uh, a pretty good uh, tool. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Elodie. Um, coming back now to the experience on the ground, um, there are questions related to the consumer experience. The first one is from Henrik, and he's asking, why is the eco coaching covering three years? Why not one year or five years or 10 years? And then a second question that is from Mariangela Fabri, and she asked overall, what, uh, did, the, what did you get as a feedback from homeowners, are they satisfied with the service and the results in their homes? Yes, uh, about the eco coaching duration, honestly, I don't know. I uh, should ask because uh, it's a technical question, and uh, uh, yeah, I don't know the choice of the three years. I think it's uh, it's between different uh, solutions, uh, but I can ask the details, no problem. And uh, the feedback from homeowners, uh, yeah, really, it's uh, it's 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 pretty a success. People are are, are really happy of the results. Um, and uh, yeah, I've got some. Uh, we 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 have done an activity report and some uh, communication uh, details uh, about uh, feedbacks, uh, uh, examples, and so on. So it was on the on the last slide, but. <laughs> Um, as I had to 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 shut uh, a bit, uh, um, but yes, it's it's uh, it's that's why the region is is believing in the in this uh, in this tool and has uh, extended it and really built uh, a proper policy uh, based on this experimentation and the feedbacks because uh, it's really the, um, a good tool and. The, and and it's really a, an ecosystemic approach uh, which is the, the basic uh, the basic uh, framework uh, in order to 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 be able to to get uh, in touch with people and to 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 boost uh, the the deep renovation thank you for that um and then there are a few questions on um, who is responsible? Strong. He's asking, what is the makeup of the one-stop shop? Um, and detailed question: Is the one-stop shop a local government body, or is it a combination of agencies and private sector companies? Um, and then um, a related question from Simon McGuinness asking. How important is the state back guarantee, so the RGE um, certification, to the customer decision to take on the loan to renovate? Yes, um, the one-stop shops uh, as a local entry point is uh, managed uh, principally by the, the local authorities. Uh, they are in charge to develop it. Uh, and uh, so they are um, answering to a call for tender published by the region, and uh, obviously uh, they, they have to to dedicate some uh, some some staff. Uh, uh, I mean they are basing also on existing uh, um, advisors uh, who were there, uh, but depending on other uh, program uh, pre-existing programs. So um, the idea was to. To try to to have a really um, uh, a coherent approach between the different offers, uh, you had uh, some uh, uh, cons from 
ad advisors from uh, the national program managed by uh, ADEM. Uh, you had also some uh, uh, local um, uh, yeah, local advisor put in place by the municipalities for different types of uh, advice at local level. Uh, and so the idea was to, to the, the, the same type of entry points uh, in all the territories and also to cover the territories who have uh, nobody. Um, and so uh, th there is uh, this call for tender from local authorities. Um, and obviously the region is uh, is uh, screening this uh, this call for tender uh, uh, candidature and um, and support uh, the the implementation of uh, the advisors um, with uh, with funding or with um, uh, and also uh, the national state is also covering part of this uh, of this uh, one stop shop uh, deployment but it's principally uh, managed by local authorities um, but in link as I was explaining also with uh, the private sector, especially the construction sector, uh, with this question of database of uh, uh, private uh, SMEs and, uh, and craftsmen. And this database is, uh, is, is um, one of the criteria to, to enter the database uh, is this RGE uh, label. So uh, if, the, if the enterprise is uh, RGE uh, labeled, uh, they can enter in the database and they can be uh, in, in the uh, in, 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 um, at the disposal of uh, the, the public service and of the advisor to uh, establish a working program and then uh, to to to. To do, to do the, the call for tenders and the, and the specification and the grouping and so on to answer to the, the, the renovation uh, work. So it's, it's, it's a prerequisite, this RGE labeling, to, to be able to be uh, in, the, in the database of the, of the public service for, uh, for energy efficiency. So it's, 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 it's important and it's a, uh, it's, it's a label that can be improved, of course, uh, but uh, for the moment, it's a, it's, it's a good tool and it's, a, it's, it's what we, we have on the, so it's, a, it's what we use. Thank you, Elodie. Um, I have questions now, one is specific turned to you, and one is a more general question that is maybe addressed to Adrian. So the question to Elodie is from Jeromine. She's asking, um, I would like to know if you have taken the opportunity of these renovations to improve the building's fire safety. And the general question, which is addressed to Adrian, but which is linked, um, is why is limiting the area-based approaches to buildings and why not going beyond buildings, for example, uh, smart city aspects uh, or distribution of consumption, street lighting, etc. So I will just first turn to uh, Elodie and then Adrian. Elodie on fire safety? Yeah, on fire safety, honestly, uh, I will not be able to answer. Uh, but I can ask my colleagues working in Anya. And um, just about the, the other question, uh, uh, I can just tell that uh, for some, some of the cities, uh, uh, they are doing the link between uh, their uh, energy and climate plans or their smart city uh, uh, strategy and so on. And uh, for example, I know that in Amiens, they have linked uh, their policy on uh, private home renovation and the public service for energy efficiency to the heating network. Um, they have they have mixed the the, the eating network taxes uh, uh, to use uh, to use them to to help uh, funding the private renovation of some, some part of the uh, houses uh, for people uh, uh, who were on the on the uh, on the on the places where the heating network was uh, uh, built and uh, for, I mean some cities are thinking of uh, linking these uh, different uh, initiatives. But uh, I let uh, Adrian uh, answer. 
Yes, thank you, Elodie. And Dominique, thank, uh, Dominic, thank you for the, <clears throat> the question from KFW. Uh, indeed, uh, there's a simple answer. I concentrate on buildings because I speak all the time about buildings. And, um, but I'm very, very aware that when you have an area-based approach, you open the opportunity to really bring on board uh, the whole environmental improvement of the area that you're dealing with. So including street lighting, including renewables uh, at local level that's shared, not just on every building, including the other good aspects that you, you've mentioned in your question. And uh, we at Euroways, of course, would not stand against any of that, uh, but would in fact hope that uh, regions and cities would decide uh, to marry all their programs together from smart cities through energy renovation, through environmental improvements in order to bring the whole area uh, up to a very high standard of uh, quality. Thus creating, as I said, I think in my presentation, a greater sense of community, a greater sense of ownership of the uh, renovated area. So not exclusive, it's just that I'm a spokesperson for buildings, Dominique, it's as uh, simple as that. Back to you, Helen. Thank you, Adrian. Um, I'm just now conscious of time and I will use the moderator's privilege to ask the last question um, and coming back to policy because this is what we work on at your ACE um, and to ask Elodie the question about the renovation wave which has been announced by the European Commission for September um, a new coming from uh, a region in France having experience on the ground, would you have any advice or expectations from the Commission to for this renovation wave on how to actually accelerate um, implementation of, of projects? Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, yes, in terms of, um, of tools and political framework for the moment, uh, we are a bit uh, um, not afraid, but uh, we we we've seen that on the on the Green Deal uh, um, legislative uh, document. For the moment, the renovation wave is uh, only mentioning a few of the of the of the targets, and the residential uh, uh, buildings are not properly um, uh, mentioned. Uh, and so it's it's uh, as it's. Uh, it's the core of the of the of the renovation, uh, I, I think, and the most difficult part because you have to get uh, people and uh, on board. It's uh, uh, like you like you like you saw on my presentation. It's not uh, an easy task, even if we we do the or which we can for the to to put in place this ecosystem and the framework. And uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's still uh, difficult to have <clears throat> this. Uh, uh, massification figures uh, that uh, we have in our uh, uh, schemes or uh, strategies and so on. Um, and in terms of tools, uh, we mentioned uh, Elena, uh, there are also different tools like the PDAs and so on in the, in the different programs of uh, the European Commission. It's uh, it's it's really useful, and uh, we we really hope that uh, they will uh, they will continue to be to be deployed. Also, thanks to the European Investment Bank. Uh, maybe um, what we what we would like is to 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 have a, maybe an easier access to this uh, to this uh, sort of tools uh, because between Elena PDA and so on, it's not the same um, same condition of uh, access. And uh, and we we saw that with the the, the integration of these um, technical assistance tools uh, in the life program, uh, with maybe uh, a fear to have some uh, some worse condition of confounding. It's it's a, it's a worry we have to 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 be able to to have a, an access to these tools. Uh, it's really important for us to have this uh, mechanism of technical assistance because I have just some figures in mind about social housing uh, I saw in in, uh, in some documents on my regions and for example on social housing there have been 100 million of euros spent uh, in terms of subsidies to renovate uh, 5,000 uh, units 
uh, of housings for an energy gain of 37%. So 100 million euros. And as uh, also we see with our regional aids and mechanisms, we have spent maybe 1 million or maybe 10 million in terms of the public service for energy efficiency, but to renovate 1,000, 2,000 housing units. I mean, it's not so costly. It's really the leverage factor which is uh, important and the, the really the, the technical and financial assistance that you provide to households to put in place all these tools and which uh, boosts the investment and, and leverage the, the private uh, uh, funding. Uh, so it's not necessarily the big, big amount of subsidies it's really more these types of tools and we hope that the uh, European Commission will uh, maybe uh, ease the access to this uh, type of tools. Thank you Elodie for this very clear last message. Now turning back to Julie Castro for the final words of conclusion. Yes, uh, thank you, Ellen. Uh, we're in minus two minutes, so I'll keep it very, very short. Just thank you for being with us today. I think once again, we had a really good presentation um, and a lot of questions from, from the listeners. Uh, and, you know, we did this series of webinars to really dive in on the details. And what I'm taking from this, this discussion is, is that, that you really want to understand just all the fine details of how exactly this work mode is and what key learnings we can learn from that. And that, of course, is the overall frame for the Renovation Wave Initiative, we understood it, to really make sure that we're sharing all those good individual practices from all corners of Europe with each other. So I'm hopeful that if we, if we do that and we get to this level of detail, then we will also be able to put something together that isn't just a series of good projects and experiences, but something that can be applied throughout Europe. Um, I think one issue that cropped up again and again, and it's one thing we continue to struggle with, is this issue of actually connecting with the homeowners in the first instance uh, to make them interested in, uh, in, in doing renovations and to help them through sort of the maze of where to look for the right sort of help and the right sort of funding. So that really remains the crux because we can't hook in there with the homeowners, but also with the renters. Uh, then we won't get much further. Um, and I think related to that, and I already flagged it at the beginning of my intervention, we will have a next webinar. It's going to be on the 11th of May uh, with Energy Cities, and that one will focus on the one-stop shop. So this very sort of important upfront entry point of how do we actually connect um, owners, renters with uh, the right sort of expertise so that they can take the next step and go ahead with the renovation. Uh, and with that, I'd like to thank you very much for, uh, for being with us today. Um, I apologize for the slight technical um, issues in the beginning. I hope that was solved for most of you. Um, and we look forward to seeing you again for the next webinar. Thank you.